cut, let's cut, let's chat, uh, let's talk about it. You know, I'm here in the USA, so I can have my comments to, you know, I just want to compare the guidelines that are in place that have been announced by Ministry of Health to what is currently happening here in uh, the United uh, States, as well as I just uh, visited Europe recently, and I was in Africa in, in, in August. I was there in Zambia, in South Africa, in uh, August, September. And uh, we're just going to talk about that. Uh, a lot of people are complaining about these guidelines, and I just want to share my view on this. So, Ragi, you can come in. I'm going to share in my groups. While I share in my groups, you can contribute. The floor is yours, Ragi. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ah, uh, to start with, uh, but you also, sound very uh, far. You sound very far. Can you come uh, close to the mic? Sure, sure. Am I what you now? Uh, a little bit better, but not the best. Yeah. Am I holding the ball? That's better, yes. Thank you. It's better, but not the best. <laughs> okay, let me rejoin the meeting. Then maybe I think it's network. Okay, okay. Yes, guys, welcome. Don't go away. We are going to discuss the new Ministry of Health guidelines. I'm going to share my, my comments and uh, my comment is going to be based on my, my experience here in the United States, what they are doing uh, for COVID. And also I travel to Europe. I'm also going to share what's happening in Europe. My experience, I was in Ireland and then we stopped in Amsterdam. And then I was also in Zambia a few months ago. So I just want to comment on what um, the government of Zambia, the Ministry of Health Guidelines, I want to comment on that. Welcome, guys. I see you, James. I see you, James. Mike, James Makina, I see you. Mildred, I see you. Raggy, I see you. Let's share, guys. Let's talk. This is a very important subject, you know. We have lost a lot of lives due to the pandemic, and we must take it seriously. I know a lot of people, they are, you know, their views are just, you know, their comments are disturbing me, and there is a lot of, you know, propaganda going on about this COVID vaccination. So I'm going to give you my uh, my opinion on this, and it's just my opinion. And that being said, I want to remind everyone that um, I am a human rights activist, and I am not a, a cadre. I am not a political cadre. I am a human rights activist. That being said, this means that I stand on the truth. I speak for the people. I am the voice for the voiceless. Sorry, guys, I'm, in, I'm multitasking. I'm sharing in my groups as I'm speaking. And I'm saying this because a lot of people have been trolling me on my page and telling me that I am bitter or frustrated. I am not bitter or frustrated. My job as a human rights activist is to speak the truth. You know, so my analysis, first of all, my analysis is based on myself as a human being. I am free to express my opinion. And secondly, I am not a cadre. I will speak the truth. I am a member of UPND. If they are doing good things, we are going to uphold them. If they break campaign promises, we are going to speak against that. So me, I'm not going to cheer wrong things. Just because I'm a member of UPND does not mean I'll be cheering the wrong things that they are doing, no. We campaigned on uh, based on their campaign promises, and it's our duty to hold them accountable to these promises. So if you come on my page and expect me to be chairing this new Dawn government when they are doing the wrong thing, then I'm sorry you are following the wrong person. I am not going to bootleg anyone. I'm not going to cheerlead wrong things, no. 
we will speak the truth as it is. A fact is a, a fact. We will be calling a spade a spade on this uh, on this platform. That's what we are here for. So today we're just going to talk about. I'm going to give my opinion about uh, this uh, the the new COVID guidelines. And I'm going to speak based on my experience because I've traveled, you know, to three continents so far in this pandemic. And I will just discuss about that. So, guys, there's a Zoom link if you want to join in. Um, there's a Zoom link you can uh, join in. But that being said, this is a very important discussion because we have lost a lot of lives. Myself, I've lost loved, loved ones to COVID. So it's not a joking matter. It's a very serious matter. And let's look at the, these guidelines objectively. And for me, I'm going to give my opinion on what I think. I'm going to look at these guidelines individually. And then from there, I'll open the floor. I'll share the Zoom link. If you want to join in, we can join in and discuss. But um, yeah, so I printed the, the, the updates with me. Uh, they are here with me, I printed it. So there are 10 new uh, uh, updated uh, COVID guidelines. The first one is mandatory masking. And the number two is no entry in government building without a COVID vaccination card. No entry in a bar, nightclub without proof or book vaccination card, buses to load 50% capacity, churches to congregate only for one hour and three times a week, bus to open four days, Monday to Saturday, Wednesday to Saturday, journalists will not be allowed to cover function, uh, aggressive vaccination to commence Tuesday, and no civil servant will be allowed to go to work without proof of vaccination. New measures must be announced as a, will be new measures to be announced as a new information emerge. So yes, so for me on number one, I think they are right. I think number one, they are in order to demand mandated masking. So number one, I think is okay. That is what is uh, happening. But all over the world, some people, they don't believe in masking. So I think it's mandatory. Like if you go in a public building, public place, if you're among people who are not part of your household, you should be masking. So number one, I approve. This is just my opinion. I'm not saying what, what, it's my opinion. You guys can share your opinion too. So no entry in any government building without a vaccination card and markets are uh, a uh, uh, government uh, building so number two i think is a bit harsh i think number two where they are saying yeah. no entry in any government building without a, a vaccination card i think this is too much i think number two is infringing on people's rights you know you cannot ask everyone to wear a, to be vaccinated you know I think that the thing that should be happening is that they should um, demand that people get vaccinated. Okay, Raggy, we are hearing some background noise. Can you mute, Raggy? Yes. So I am saying that uh, on my, on uh, forcing everyone to have a vaccination. I think that is infringing on people's rights. Some people, due to their medical conditions, they do not want to risk to take this virus, uh, this vaccination, because this vaccination is, uh, this uh, vaccine is actually in trial, is in trial phase. We don't even know the side effects. We don't know what's gonna happen to us a few years from now. So I think this, the decision for the government to demand everyone in a market to get a vaccination, I think it's too much. I'm here in the United States. 
what they do is one, they have just enforced one, if it's a government building, you enter it, you do social distancing, you wear a mask, and then you, you know what, you sanitize. That's all they can do. They can, there is nowhere where they are forcing people. I think Zambia will be the first country where I have heard they are demanding to, to, to provide a vaccination card to enter a market. A market is a place where people get their supplies. They buy food. This is basically holding people at gunpoint to say get, get vaccinated. I think what the government should do is they should just demand masking masking and social distancing in all public facilities and then this entry of a nightclub or vaccination yes i think entering in a nightclub should be required you should requ you should be required to enter a nightclub with a proof of vaccination because it's a choice not everybody goes to a bar so those people who want really to go in a bar let them get vaccinated. I agree with number three. Yes. I also agree with number four, buses to load 50%. I agree with that. And then for number five, for the churches, for me, churches, I think churches should be shut down completely unless they are holding a service outside. I think church should be, all churches must be shut down completely unless they are congregating outside because in church god is everywhere you don't you do not have to go to 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 church for you to pray they can have zoom meetings or they can meet outside that is my contribution on number five and then bars it's like you know what this ministry of health is more concerned about bars number three we have a, a, a point on bars and number six also on bars. Is Zambia only on about uh, about bars and nightclub? Is that the only thing they are concerned about? Bars to open daily from, to only open four days, Wednesday to Saturday, 20 hours, from 18 hours to 20 hours, two hours only. I don't care, they can close the bars. If people really want to drink, they can drink in their home. Why do they want to, 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 to give a, you know, to even give leeway to bars and then restrict people to enter in government buildings or markets, you know, it's too much. I think they should leave the bars alone. People want to go drink in the bar, let them get vaccinated and they should not put any restrictions. It's a choice, it's too much. Yes, journalists, yes, because it's hard for journalists to do social distancing. So I think the journalists, they must be vaccinated before they, they, they cover any event. And because journalists travel, they are going from place to place. I see, yes, uh, that's good. Number eight, uh, aggressive vaccination to commence on Tuesday. I agree with that, but I don't agree where they want everybody to be vaccinated. Basically, this is forcing all citizens to be vaccinated. If you tell people in a market, you have to get a proof of vaccination to be in a market. That's just forcing the whole population to get vaccinated. And uh, that's it, guys. I don't know what your comments are, guys. Let me read your comments, what you're saying about this any comments yes i see you wisdom mfuzi i see you hi mr mfuzi <laughs> judy i see you welcome leah i see you vivian i see you joe following kakumbi following yes guys i'm here in the united states and you know what uh the, the 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 approach of the government here in the united states they have put this on the people they are encouraging people to get vaccinated and some companies they are requiring proof of vaccination before you return to work so it's a choice some people who don't want to get vaccinated they have quit their jobs you know they are trying to find jobs where they can work without uh, being required 
a proof of vaccination. And of course, I was in, in, in Europe and some restaurants also is a choice. So restaurants are required to show proof of vaccination because it's very difficult to, to you know, to social distance in a restaurant. So yes, in a restaurant is a choice. So you can eat at home or you can go to a restaurant. So there they are requiring proof of vaccination. But in government offices, I don't see the need of someone to get vaccinated because they need to go to a passport office, you know, which you are going to be there for 20 minutes. Why don't they put measures in these government offices to ensure that anybody entering a building has their temperature checked, has a mask on, and when they are in the building, they, they do social distancing. You don't need everyone to, to, to be vaccinated. In the most of the markets, they are outdoors. So in a market that is outdoors, already there's a free circulation of air. You, people can easily distance in a market and wear their masks. We do not have to require proof of vaccination to enter a market. And on the plane, for example, flying by plane is a choice. And in the plane, if you buy a ticket, for example, internationally they are requiring these tests that you must do and you must be negative to fly you know in the proof of vaccination so it's different but where you know a whole government a whole zambia i think is the first country they have broken a record to demand this i think it's outrageous to say everyone who's entering a government building must be vaccinated i think this is a police state this a dictatorship kind of mentality it's not right that they can say anyone going to a public office must be vaccinated. I don't agree with this. I think it's a too much. I think it's outrageous, outrageous, and I think it's a dictatorial tendency. Yes, you can demand employees, civil servants, to be vaccinated because civil servants, some of their offices, they are squeezed together. But again, you can move around things to ensure there is a social distancing among people working to ensure there are glass uh, separators um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a offices or in banks or in such places, you know? So I don't know, guys. For me, I think all these guidelines are good. The only uh, problem that I have with these guidelines is demanding people who are going to a government building to be vaccinated. I think that is outrageous. Yes, guys, let me just read your comments. Uh, James says, I'm following you, Mama. This uh, mandatory thing of getting vaccinated should be reversed. They should not force us. They don't know our, their repercussions. Exactly, you know? If it's a job, they can say, okay, if you want a job, you have to get vaccinated, fine. But they can't say to come into a government building, you need a proof of vaccination. If you're going for a passport office for only 10 minutes, to pick up a form. Why do you need proof of vaccination? If you're going into a bank eh, to get your money, do some business five minutes, why do you need proof of vaccination? People can wear masks and social distancing, they'll be fine. Uh, Stephen, I see you watching from Chingola. Uh, yes, Kakumbi, I am against mandatory vaccination exactly we are against it yes we are against it i think um you know this is too much this is the only country in the whole world where i have seen the government requiring people to get vaccinated to get into to go into a, a, a government building it's, it's too much this is a dictatorship now you know is too much. I don't think I don't think they made the right the, the full consultation for repercussions of the, this decision to want people to to be you know requiring people to be vaccinated to enter a government building. And then also they are saying that if you are flying into Zambia, you need to quarantine for ten days at designated uh, you know hotels or lodges. Fine, the people who are traveling can, you know, 
can uh, can quarantine for 10 days it and it also depends where they're coming from in most of international travelers they are pre-screened so they are pre-screened to get on the flight and then they can be tested within three days of arrival so i don't know guys it's um for me the main thing is just uh, wanting the whole population to be to be vaccinated and even wanting a proof of uh, vaccination in, in entering a market i think that's outrageous how are they how are they going to monitor these markets in in all around zambia it's crazy how are they going to monitor the covid uh, you know the covid book vaccination in a in a village in shangomo how are, how are they going to monitor that a market in Shikankata. How are, they are saying here that uh, they must take a scan of uh, your vaccination ID and your NRC or, or passport and store it on your phone. Have they have they got a, a, a smartphone for everyone in Zambia? It's ridiculous. We are talking about a country who has got uh, over fifty percent of the people living in poverty. And then they are making a statement to say, everyone must scan their vaccination record and their ID on their phone. So the people, the villagers out there, in Kalabo, in Sesheke, in my village, do they have a smartphone to scan the, 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 the vaccination card and the NRC? It's ridiculous. Like, you know what? Some of these things is like you're mocking people. It's mockery. So that's what's going on, guys. I think they just need to think and reassess their decision because in Zambia, 50% of the people do not even have a cell phone. And also, most of our women, they are in the markets. Patson, can you mute your phone? Yes. So our women, actually, they are the ones, they are the vendors in the market. And these women, do they even have a cell phone to scan a smartphone? Hmm? So is the government going to buy everyone a smartphone so that everyone can store their vaccination card on the phone and, uh, you know, and, uh, and whatever their ID. I don't know, guys. I'm reading your comments. Miuna says, I'm following you. The government should not force people. And uh, why are we getting COVID vaccination instead of medicine? of a new variation. It means we are getting outdated medicine. Leah says, thank you. Mvula says, these are the useless people who make useless decisions without consultation. Warren says, this is the worst thing to be declared in Zambia since independence. It means that, it means that drunkards can go and intermingle. At church, people go and intermingle. But a victim cannot go to report or visit hospital if he's, if he's not vaccinated. This is a shallow thinking and shameful. Exactly, exactly. You know, what are they going to do to the criminals? Are they going to release all the criminals who are not vaccinated? Do criminals have to uh, produce a proof of vaccination before they get arrested? It's ridiculous. Like people should think, you know, like consultation is really important. You just can't wake up and make these this decisions just that, Think about things. It's a government, it's a team. That's why it's important to work in a team. Because when you are in a team, you put your heads together, discuss things, you know. You 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 identify, you troubleshoot. If we implement this, what is going to happen? What are the consequences of doing this? You know? But you you just hear there is a virus in South Africa. Overnight, you wake up and make these updates, which are ridiculous. For me, I think it's ridiculous, especially the part where they say they, everyone should cut 
should scan their vaccination card to their, their smartphone. That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Even printers, if it means like I was traveling recently, people were, it's a, we had a choice, but traveling is a choice. You know, people were traveling so you could use your phone. The other people had the actual papers still printed, but you're traveling, not in a market. Are they buying every Zambian a smartphone? That is my question now. Because you cannot implement something without looking at how you are going to implement it. What you need to implement that? I end here, guys. I end here. Leah says uh, this mandatory policy is just unrealistic. They must consider people's situation before putting up these uh, mandates. I just hope that the government sees, sees, this, sees this live and not act on it. Dr. Masevo is trying so hard to make herself notice by making ridiculous uh, decisions. Yeah, but you know what, Dr. Masevo, I respect you. I think this list, if you made this list, you should have sat with your team of management there. S sit with the doctors, sit with the, the stakeholders, doctors, you know, public health workers, city councils, you know, communications people. Did you discuss this as a team, as a national management team? Did they discuss this? Did they discuss the consequences of these decisions? You know? It's a non-starter. These, uh, these COVID, uh, whatever restrictions, are a flop before they even start. So some of these decisions, you just actually make yourself look bad. Because they are not serving. They, they, they are non-starter. They are unrealistic. It's like, well, well, let's survive. I know you know you can have ideas, but uh, have people, you know, proof, proof uh, consultation is the word that I'm looking for. Consult. How do you, uh, as a minister, you tell people to scan and uh, me i'm still hung up on the thing of scanning everybody scan your vaccination card to your phone so but sylvia must say well, is minister of health going to buy every zambian a smartphone hmm? and the load data and the power already we have load shading people can't even power up their phones to put their light. and then you talk about all these ridiculous things you know the, the focus is a is based on beer or people drinking. Who cares about drunkards who are going in the club? We don't really care. What I have not seen anything mentioned about education, the teachers, you know? For me, I expected the focus to be on, a, on, a, on, on school children. And the school children, I mean people who, I mean contact, I mean transmitter of this disease because school children, they sit in a classroom from there, they go home, again, they come back. And the, the, these children are coming from all walks of life. Colleges is what I expected to address. Address colleges, the impact of this virus, how we can protect our school children and, and uh, how we can protect our students at colleges, universities, you know. But these guidelines, they're just focusing it on protecting it, you know, beer, drunkards, beer holes and the bars and nightclubs, it's like, it's ridiculous. It's re and actually, the more I think about it, it's obviously beginning to annoy me, you know? Otherwise, I end here. And let's, uh, Patson, you have a comment. I see you are online. You can come in. Welcome. Well, thank you, madam. Uh, actually, I've been wondering since yesterday, when I heard the Minister of Health announcing that it's, uh, it's a man, everyone has to be vaccinated, what, I mean, what, uh, what interest does the government have for everyone to be vaccinated? Because what we have been hearing is uh, that thing, it's not, uh, people are not be supposed to be forced to do that, uh, to be vaccinated. But uh, I was just wondering, and, um, as you say, the government just wake up from nowhere, no consultations. They come with those ideas. I think uh, this is too much for 
the UPND to go at, to go to such, to such level. I think uh, the move is not welcome. Uh, otherwise, uh, I think I end there, Madam. That's the comment. Uh, yes thank you person thank you for chipping in and uh now that you mentioned i just want to say that here in the united states we have a days where a thousand a thousand people were dying every day from covid they did not demand everyone to say you you get a vaccination no one thousand people have been dying every day three thousand but zambia our intention levels are really low so i think it's really outrageous this draconian method to say everybody get vaccinated you know we can't even compare like in italy where almost all all cities everyone was affected they didn't they, i don't hear in italy them saying everybody must be vaccinated to get a market uh to get into a market it's it's, it's crazy but i end here uh we can share this video let's have these conversations but uh, i don't think the the ministry of health of uh, sylvia masebo you know consulted people and i don't think this the, these are the best guidelines for the people and to summarize i'll just say that uh in these guidelines the new things that have been talked about are not really affecting like the beer there's this thing about uh you know emphasizing on how many days uh, when bars should be open or, or you know when churches should be open but they neglect to talk about the school children the colleges you know that is that is where we need a protection that is where we need guidelines our school children but no mention of school children what will be done in the schools and then they mention of this is scanning of uh, of the, the COVID vaccine on the phone. So my question to them is that, are they going to provide a smartphone for every Zambian? I end here, guys. I'll try to read your comments. You can uh, you can read, uh, you can leave comments there. I'll read them when I have time. But I also want to share that this, uh, as much as we, uh, we, we condemn some of these actions, it's very important for us to get vaccinated because it reduces the chance of you getting yes. hospitalized if you contract the disease. Otherwise, even if you are vaccinated, it's not guaranteed. People who are vaccinated are still contracting the disease. But then again, you know, so, so that's why it's like, it's not even important to say people get vaccinated because people who are vaccinated, they're still contracting the disease. The only that's thing about right. vaccination is it, it reduces your chances of becoming critically ill, but you can get the vaccine, you can pass the, I mean, you can get COVID and then you can pass on the the the, the, the COVID to another uh, person. So yes. the point of saying everybody get vaccinated is redundant because people who are vaccinated are still getting sick. So all I can say is let's take care of our health, eat healthy, you know, uh, social distancing, wear your mask, you know? So let's just follow the guidelines, but this whole thing of uh, vaccination, I don't know, because people who are getting vaccinated, they still end up uh, getting the, the COVID anyway. So thank you guys for watching. I uh, will see you soon. Uh, follow, like, share my video and my page. Have a good night, bye.